Live from ClickOrlando.com, this is News 6 at 5.30. This is a News 6 Plus takeover. Here now is Lisa Bell and Candace Campos with Florida Foodie. Hello and welcome back to Florida Foodie. I'm your host, Lisa Bell, along with our producer, Thomas Mates. Hello. For more than 30 years, Brother Jimmy's Barbecue has been serving up Southern Flair north of the Mason-Dixon line. The chain got started in New York City, but recently saw a big contraction coming out of the pandemic, reducing the franchise down to one location in Maryland. Now, a new second location has opened up right here in Orlando at Icon Park. We are so happy to be joined today by the man behind this new location, Mike DeQuino. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. So when did you open up? It was <laughs> August 12th. Yeah. So you've been with Brother Jimmy's for a while, though. I have been with Brother Jimmy's for about 15 years. Okay. Yeah. How did that all get started? Uh, let's see. I was just telling Tom the story. Uh, I, was, I had a, a nightclub out in Long Island. I sold the nightclub. It was kind of relaxing, enjoying not working for a minute. And a good friend of my brother's had called me. Who my brother always said, this guy reminds me exactly of you. You look the same, shaved heads, you talk the same. <laughs> Everything about you, I feel like I'm talking to you and I'm talking to him. So I met with him. His name is John. And we hit it off instantly. And that was it. I started like a week later. I thought you were going to say his name was Jimmy. No, nope, his name wasn't Where did Jimmy. Where the name come from? So Jimmy Goldman is the founder of Brother okay. Jimmy's. He founded the, the, all the locations back in 1989. He mm -hmm. went to school down in UNC, went to school in Duke, saw the void for Southern Barbecue in New York City, and opened up the first restaurant on 79th and 1st Avenue. Okay. It was more like a, call it a meat market, more like a shack, mm -hmm. more like a very, very small little barbecue spot, but it was really known for its nightlife. That's really Jimmy. He always had an eye for nightclubs and nightlife, but he was able to take this Southern cuisine and add it into this sports bar, $2 mm. PBR, kind of Upper East Side, where to be kind of spot. It always had the most you know popular people were in it. It was a good looking crowd to go into and hang out. And <laughs> it's, it's so odd to say that. Like right. For like a yeah. barbecue restaurant, it just became like such a scene in New mm -hmm. York City. It was top five Zagat for nightlife year after year. It was just the place to kind of go. You had celebrity hangouts. Peyton Manning and Eli Manning there for a Halloween party. Just It was just so random. That's when I first came in to meet with John and just kind of saw what it was. I instantly was like, oh, this is a fun place. I can yeah. get behind this. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you were saying uh, that, like, you know, it opened in 89. At the time, Barbecue in New York was non-existent version. Non I mean, now it's almost right. ubiquitous, but at the time, very novel. I mean, he could be, he could go down as the person to kind of bring Southern barbecue to New York City. No one was doing Southern barbecue. Mm -hmm. New Yorkers think barbecue, it's a hamburger and a hot dog on a grill in a backyard. It's not smoking a brisket or pulled pork for 16 hours overnight. Like he popped two smokers in the middle of the Upper East Side, which is the wealthiest zip code in the world. <laughs> and here you have barbecue smoke pouring out of the streets in the first and second avenue and this is uh, a different barbecue it's carolina style so carolina style, what right. makes it different it's delicious my mouth is watering by the way just hearing you talk about it because i actually had a chance to come and try out your new location so tell us like what is different about carolina style so barbecue. the food is hands down is, is awesome it's great Again, with, the rec with what New York was in the nightlife scene, it never got the recognition for what the food was. Same exact recipes at the West Palm Beach store, best barbecue in Florida. Same recipes when they opened a location called the Hudson, which was more of a dining, more of a wedding kind of hall. Same exact recipes, best barbecue in New York. But just at the table at a Brother Jimmy's drinking PBRs and fish bowls with 20-something frat boys, no one would write and say the barbecue is good, which is kind of funny. What is up with I, that? I don't know what's up with that. It, just, it never made sense. Just because of the scene, it was like, yeah, okay. it can't be good food here. Like, that guy's doing a funnel. He's funneling mm -hmm. a beer, or they're doing shots at the bar. Just, you're playing flip cup in the back of a beer pond. They can't have good food. So we just never got the recognition for good food. But everywhere else, the food hmm. is phenomenal. Well, and it seems like a perfect fit for Orlando because it is such a kid-friendly, family-friendly place. You know, you can go in there and keep the kids entertained while you want to sit down, maybe have a beverage. For sure. I mean, Kids, yeah. And kids eat for free. So every adult entree, a kid's meal is absolutely free. There's no no cost to a kid's meal at all. We want to encourage families. We want to have families come and have their kids' birthday parties. Mm -hmm. We, Our whole motto is to create memories. It always has been. Yeah. Like, where were you when? You, you, you want people to say we were at Brother Jimmy's. I mean, yeah. I met my wife there. Two of the other owners met their wives there. So many people, thousands of people throughout the years have met their significant others at Brother Jimmy's. I just met a couple this weekend that live in Orlando now. And he asked her to marry 
he asked her to marry her on the ski ball machine in the Lexington Avenue location of Brother Jimmy's. Oh my gosh. And they came back here in Orlando, took a picture on the <laughs> ski ball machine we had to like reminisce. Because when you go to Orlando, all of the decor is straight out of New York, right? It's straight out of New York. So unfortunately for the brand, when they closed their last New York store, we, t- we went up there and drove and took everything out from the barrels on the walls of official Jack Daniels barrels to all the decor, which is like almost impossible to find now. Mm-hmm. When that show American Pickers came out, all those metal signs, those old gas station stuff, the old, all those old trinkets just became like through the roof in value. You can't just go to a junkyard anymore and just rummage through and pick them up. Everything right. has value on it now where 15, 20 years ago it didn't. So in, in the basement of our Murray Hill store, it's a sub basement, three levels down. The other stores around the city that one by one kind of closed down the Upper East Side, the Bay Shack store, the West Side. We would take all the decor and just kind of put it in that basement. So when we went up there, we unloaded like everything out. Wow. Yeah. So it's yeah. decades of Brother Jimmy's memorabilia that we have on up in, in Orlando, which is pretty cool. So if you've been yeah. to a Brother Jimmy's and want to relive the past a little bit, that's the place that's, to go. You'll see yeah. some, if, you, if you carved your name in a table at one point, you'll see that, ta- <laughs> you'll see that table in Orlando. <laughs> so um, you were saying that you when all the stores closed in New York. What was that like for, for I'm, I'm sure you've been close with Jimmy. What's been that like for him just to see that sort of like contraction of the business but i mean obviously it's it's still living on through, through i think it's just new york new york's been tough i mean <clears throat> midtown manhattan still doesn't have the the volume and the capacity that it had before the pandemic it just really hasn't come back eventually it will mm-hmm. but it hasn't it's just not there you know the footprint for brother jimmy started out very small 2000 square foot stores then when they opened the store by madison square garden the one in murray hill the one in union square they tripled that went to six seven thousand square foot footprints mm-hmm. so it kind of in a way took away from those little stores you know really built out these big stores which is great and that was what, was what built the franchise program mm-hmm. all the franchise stores are about that size too you know, but it kind of things kind of shifted from just a little neighborhood bar to more of a, a big mm-hmm. you know big style restaurant slash nightclub slash game watch venue i mean the game watching has been huge we mm-hmm. align with multiple different alumni groups. We were a Michigan bar for a while. We were a Penn State bar for a while. We've always been home to the Miami Hurricanes in New York, which we're aligning with now down here in Orlando. So those those big on come out, five, you know, five 600 people that would come out and watch a game, you, you just couldn't fit them in the little mm-hmm, stores anymore. Mm-hmm. So we kind of had to evolve into that bigger footprint. And that's now what you're trying to do here in and Orlando. that's what we're doing here yeah. in Orlando. Yeah. yeah. With a full event space, with a full catering options, you know, mm-hmm. with seats for 270 people, the ability to put 500 people in the place for a full-on buyout, a full-on game watch, a Super Bowl event, mm-hmm. really any type of corporate event. So I, like, as I mentioned, I did get a chance to try some of your barbecue. I want to go over the menu a little bit more. It is delicious. I had the ribs, which I highly recommend, uh, the pulled pork, the cornbread, the mac and cheese. I don't know what's in your mac and cheese, but it's amazing. It's really, the food's it, really good. Yeah. It really is. Get back to your question before, what makes Carolina barbecue significant is it's a vinegar-based sauce. When you sauce with a vinegar base, it keeps so much more moisture in the meat. So a lot of times when you do a pulled pork or a chopped pork, it dries out really quickly. Ours doesn't because we, we hit it with our Carolina sauce, which is a vinegar-based sauce, which just sucks up a lot of that moisture and keeps it in the in the meat. So when you serve it, it's just juicy mm-hmm. and mouth-watering. Mm-hmm. Which is similar to almost how I would describe your mac and cheese. It was like creamy. It wasn't dry. It wasn't crunchy. It was really good. Yeah. So we make our own. <laughs> we do, we do, we do, we do, it's really good. We, make, we start with the Velveeta base. Yeah. And we make our own cheese sauce. Okay. So we don't just, some macaroni, you just kind of add crumbled cheese into right. it, mix it up, and melt it. We make the cheese sauce separate. Mm-hmm. And then we put the cheese sauce and mix with the macaroni that already has the cheddar in it. We add a little gruyere to it. So it gets that little stringiness. Yeah. It was it's, just, it's really good. <laughs> I mean, the food is really good. That, yeah. the, and and what's, we brought down one of the chefs from New York, his name is Francisco, who's been working with the food for, man, probably like 18 years. Mm-hmm. We had a central commissary in New York that would make all the food on the West Side Highway. We had a Brother Jimmy's box truck that would drive around every morning and it would drop all the food off at different stores. So Francisco worked in that commissary, so he knows how to keep quality control, how every every item needs to taste the same, every sandwich needs to taste the same. Just was really good at keeping that consistency together. Even your cornbread. So we make our own cornbread. Everything's made. Yeah, we don't but it didn't fall apart. Make. I mean, normally when I make cornbread, you know, it's like this crumbly mm-hmm. mess yeah. and it's everywhere, but that was not the case with your cornbread. So what's oh, your secret? You know, secret is a lot of butter. I need to add more butter. Sounds um, like Southern cooking. Yeah. <laughs> we make everything. There's yeah. nothing that we don't make from scratch. We the make colored our own greens. blue cheese. We make our own ranch dressing. The things you would think would wow. just come out of a can, we don't. We make everything. 
And the collard greens, they had a little bit of a kick and the baked beans to it, which I like. They liked. do. They both yeah. do. Yeah, the collard greens have a little red pepper in them just to give them a mm-hmm. little spice. Everything we have has a, we don't like to call it spice, we call it flavor. Okay. Some, some people say, oh, it's a little too spicy for me. It's just, we like every, like everything to be flavorful yeah. and, have, and have it a unique taste for each item. It was so good that you mentioned your catering. And I think that, you know, if people are planning a big event, this is definitely something that they should try out. Do you, how far out do you cater? I mean, how do you manage all that where you're running kind of a big restaurant in the middle of I Drive and cater? That's yeah, a lot. We can, yeah, we can handle it. We're, we're ready to do it. I mean, okay. barbecue is the food. It's all just, over it, Central Florida. All over Central Florida. Mm-hmm. It travels really well. We can set up on site, tent out with a grill, and, and cook on site. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, we have a lot of yeah. different options we can do. From the Big Apple to the Sunshine State, stay with Florida Foodie as the man behind Brother Jimmy's breaks down his unconventional route from New York to Central Florida and opening his popular restaurant in the heart of our tourist district. Welcome back to Florida Foodie. We have been sitting down with the man behind Brother Jimmy's on iDrive about bringing a New York staple to Orlando's tourist district. Let's get back to it. You were telling me a little bit about how you got here to Florida uh, in the first place. And you took kind of like a a roundabout route that didn't start necessarily with planning to open up your own restaurant. No, not at all. So my family and I moved down to work for what was a franchise company that was opening a few quick service locations and one one full service at Point Orlando. Then when the world shut down, Mm -hmm. that company ran out of funding, Mm -hmm. which was okay. Mm -hmm. Brother Jimmy's got me to Florida. It got us out of New York, which is what we wanted to do. We were ready for a change in our life. I have three young kids, my wife. We were ready for something different. We've lived in New York and Long Island, Manhattan our whole lives. So we were ready for a change. So when we got down here and everything closed, we were just super blessed and happy to be down here. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were playing golf. It wasn't, it wasn't what the world kind of saw the pandemic to be right. where we were in Winter Garden, Florida. It just wasn't. We were yeah. at the pool every day. You know, we, my kids, we homeschooled the kids. So I got to spend a lot of time that I didn't get to spend with them. Mm-hmm. Traveling from Long Island to Manhattan, going to work every day, and being in the car for, man, like almost like a 40-hour work mm-hmm. week would turn into a 70-hour work week because I'm traveling two and a half hours each way in the car to get there. So it was just a big, I mean, I, I'm a big Christian and I prayed a lot every night. It changed my life. No way that I could ever change it. And we moved to Florida and the world shut down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like, well, I asked you to change my life and you sure did change it. Careful what you wish for. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was, I couldn't have, like I said, changed how I could never change it. It mm-hmm. definitely was a big change. Um, my family does some real estate. My uncle's a big real estate buyer and, and seller. So I got into the real estate market right away. Work for, I, I still currently work for Douglas Elliman Real Estate. I do a lot of commercial, multifamily, a lot of beach property from St. Petersburg to Clearwater. My office is in St. Pete. And that was, that was awesome. It was something new. It was something challenging. I uh, used all my skills from running a restaurant. Just, I mean, business at the end of the day is people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's talking to people. It's dealing with people. It's filling a void that someone needs help with. You know, it's just being a, a good person to be able to help people get from point A to point B. And I felt like real estate was just a natural niche for me. It was just mm-hmm. an easy market for me to do. It was the marketing through a marketing a restaurant was kind of the same thing as marketing yourself through a real estate world and marketing properties for people. And it just naturally came to me. So it was great. We had a great two years. We had a great two-year run. And restaurants were behind me. I was done. It was no more locked to a restaurant. But there was always something kind of pulling me back to serve. The one thing I missed doing real estate is that I was alone. It's just me and... You're working by yourself most of the time. You're working with a buyer and a seller, but that's kind of it. And when you're done with it, when you're done with it, yeah, you try to follow up and keep in touch, but you're kind of mm-hmm. done with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where a restaurant is just so much more intentional serving. When you give when you serve someone a plate of food and they instantly eat it and are gratified and love it. Mm-hmm. It's just such a nice feeling. It's such a nice feeling to be able to like give to people that in, in that way. And you can use food in so many ways too. You can use food to to reach out to people and you know feed people that are hungry, feed people that are hurting. It's just it's you know it's such a thing in that yeah. way that it's just it's not it's a tool to be able to use in that in that regard. And I feel like that that part of my life was still missing. So it just kind of pulled me back. And the whole Icon Park thing kind of came again. I say I put a lot of of, of push into my faith, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I sat at a traffic light in front of Icon Park with a good buddy of mine in the the car. And this is when kind of Jimmy had lost, well, not lost the deal, but was ready to turn it over. Wasn't going to move forward with Icon Park, was kind of done. So I said, you know what? I've become pretty good friends with Chris, who's the president of Icon Park. Let's just go have a conversation with Chris and see if there's something, maybe there's something there we can work out and Mm -hmm. we can see how we can still get the store open. It was probably, I don't know, a third built. Flooring was down, but there was really nothing, not, not a whole lot going on there. So I sat at a traffic light out front with my buddy in the car, had my cell phone in my hand, and I said to him, you know what? If it's meant to be, and we're supposed to continue on this path, 
Then we'll bump into Chris while we're here in the plaza and we'll have a conversation. Two seconds after that, my phone rings and it's Chris on my phone. I go, you got to be kidding me. I show my buddy. He goes, no way. I go, yeah, he's calling me right now. So I answer the phone. I go, hey, Chris, I was just talking about you. And he goes, ah, you brother Jimmy's guys. I'm so done with you, brother Jimmy's guys. I just had a group over at your Sand Lake store and they had a terrible experience. I go, oh, really? Well, that's uh, that's kind of weird. All right, well, let's. I said, if you're around and you can meet for a minute, I'd love to talk to you about something. And he goes, no, I have no time for you guys. No time for you. And he hangs up. I go, mm-hmm. well, God giveth and God taketh away. <laughs> yeah. So we went in. Anyway, I wanted to show my buddy the place anyway. So we went in and showed him around. We sat in Tin Roof, having a beer at Tin Roof. And my phone rings again, and it's Chris. And he goes, right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was just, I was heated. I got five minutes. Come meet me in the wheelhouse. So I go, all right back on let's see if yeah. we can do this so we sit down and we you know we kind of talk things through a little bit about how the deal kind of fell apart and what i can kind of do to put it back together and chris met his wife in brother jimmy's they had their second their second date in brother jimmy's in new york chris is, a fr- is from new york yeah so he you know he resonated with the brand right. he knew what it was he knew it would be a great fit for icon park he didn't want a big beautiful restaurant he wanted mm-hmm. kind of a, a very comfortable tailgate mm-hmm. it's kind of exactly what we, what we put together is what, is what he kind of envisioned what i envisioned and I said to him, you know, that, that I can do that. I, yeah. I can't build you a $10 million restaurant. I said, mm-hmm. but I can put together a really nice barbecue restaurant. I can put together a great staff and a great menu. And it can be a place that maybe can really drive locals that don't want to go to another chain restaurant. Mm-hmm. Don't want to be in another, I'm not going to say chain restaurant names. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to put anybody on yeah. the spot, but I don't want to be in chain restaurants. Like, yeah. There's, there's just a, that feeling. There's that difference between being in, you know, a, a non-chain compared to a, a, a chain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he said, all right, write me a proposal, put me together some logistics and show me you can do the funding and show me you can get it done. And if you can do that, we'll do it. Okay. And that was it. From then on in, it was like, (laughs) I came home to my wife. I go, I think he said yes. I think think we have to do this now. And we just, like, again, we just prayed on it and that was it. And it just kept following. Every day we just go in and, all right, what do you got for me today? Let's go. What's going to happen? Yeah. And Three months later, we put together a pretty beautiful restaurant with a great menu and a great staff and a great team. It really does seem like a good fit for Icon Park. You know, as a mom with two boys who are eight and six, we went there and my husband had all the TVs that he wanted to watch. (laughs) I had the food and the drinks going on. I was happy with that. And my boys were going to town with the arcade, the ski ball. And that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a place that you don't just come in for a meal and leave. Mm -hmm. It never was. It's supposed to be a place that you come in and... You get lost in right. a way. Like we, well, we, then you can walk around Icon Park afterwards. So it's a right. fun night out. It is. Yeah. Right. Um, it's, you know, it, I do want to get back to the menu one more time because the other thing we tried. <laughs> <laughs> Far be it for me. <laughs> was the swamp water. Yes. That's a cocktail. That is. So we serve it in a six, in a sixty four ounce fish bowl. Uh-huh. It comes with. I like, didn't have sixty four ounces. I just sampled you, it. Next no. time, next time you will. <laughs> you leave the kids home. We can get you the yeah, big one. Yeah. So we serve two we party drinks. A lot drinks. of signature drinks. We do. We, yeah. do. we do. We do. And we do two that are mainly for large parties or table table drinks. So one is the swamp water, which is in a sixty four ounce fish bowl. It comes with a alligator at the top that we fill with grenadine. It's based. It's a. <laughs> it's vodka, pineapple, and melon based mixture mm-hmm. there are 16 colorful long party straws that go in the top of the drink so it's meant to be shared yeah when the server serves it she blows a whistle so it draws attention to everyone and everyone oh sees gosh. something going on yes. she takes the alligator she mm-hmm. flips it over the grenadines mixes through the drink and you go to your party yes. so it's a whole <laughs> sales event it's, it, it, is. It, it is we do another one called the trash can that's two and a half gallons it's served in a two and a half gallon mason jar big glass <laughs> mason jar that's a full bottle of rum uh, coconut rum, spiced rum, Hawaiian punch, a few other juices, mm-hmm. and then again with the party straws, we also serve with a ladle in case you want to, <laughs> in case you want to serve in, in yourself into a cup. But that's also meant for a, for a table size drink. We do a lot of things that are encouraging group dining. Mm-hmm. We, we a lot of our platters that are you know, combos, two mm-hmm. meat, three meat combo. We do all of our appetizers in basket and bucket. So if you want to get a bucket of wings for the table to share, if you want to get drinks for the table to share, we really mm-hmm. push that. We, we have picnic style tables. We have large high top, eight top tables. We really push group dining, especially in a place like Icon Park. If you're coming for a convention or you're coming out for an event, for the most part, you're coming out with a group. I need to get down there. You got to come in. Yeah, come on in. Be our guest for sure. Yeah, see if I can handle 64 ounces on my own. There you go. (laughs) Uh, Where can people find you online? Uh, Mm Brotherjimmies.com. And you'll see there's two pages for the Orlando, one page for the Orlando and one for National Harbor. Okay. We also have an Instagram, Brother Jimmy's Icon Park. Uh, At Brother Jimmy's is the original Brother Jimmy's Instagram Mm -hmm. page. Either of those. But yeah, we, and it will make you hungry. Happy to serve Central Florida and glad to be yeah. here.
Awesome. Well, Mike DeQuino, thank you so much from Brother Jimmy's. We wish you nothing but the best. And when you're on iDrive or visiting Orlando, or if you live here, it's somewhere in Central Florida, head out there, spend the whole day, get a hotel room, spend the night, you'll have a good time. So, and get that swamp water. Put some south in your mouth. Yeah. Ah, (laughs) there you go. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, guys. And thank you for watching Florida Foodie. You can download it from wherever you listen to podcasts or watch anytime on News 6 Plus.